Hey guys, it's Ryan back on the Syntax Byte, and in this video, we're going to create a Flappy Bird clone using the CreateJS suite of libraries. So it's going to be an HTML5 game playable in any browser. It's going to be a great introduction to making games with JavaScript if you're unfamiliar, or if you just need to get quickly up to speed with the CreateJS and you're already familiar with game development, it's going to be great for that as well. I'll have all the assets and source code as well as a full written tutorial up on my website as well. So there's lots of resources in addition to these videos if you need something else to follow along. But without further ado, let's just get started. All right, so we're going to get started on our Flappy Bird clone now. So the first thing that we need to do is create uh, the HTML file that is going to house our canvas. So the way the HTML5 canvas basically works is you put a tag in your HTML page that you want to display the canvas on and then you control the canvas with JavaScript. So it's a simple tag, but then to make it do anything, you actually need to use JavaScript. But to get started, we're just going to start off with a very simple HTML file. Of course, you could put the canvas in something more complex, but we just really need a basic blank HTML file to hold our canvas. I'm going to start off with the HTML template here in Atom, and I'm going to call, give it a title of Flappy Bird Clone. Inside of our body, we're going to put a canvas. I'm going to give it an ID uh, called Game Canvas. That's important so that uh, Easel.js uh, or CreateJS, I guess, knows what to uh, attach itself to, to draw to. I'm going to give it a width of 320 and a height of 480. You can pick anything that's going to work for you in your game, but in the case of this Flappy Bird, I'm actually going with the original iPhone resolution here. Um, I'm also just going to put an inline style on there. We don't need a separate style sheet for this project. This is the only style in the entire page. I'm going to tell it to display block, uh, and I'm just going to give it a margin 0 auto, so it's centered in the page. It's just going to be a little bit more comfortable for us there. And then you just close off the tag. We don't need to put anything inside of it. Uh, that's essentially our HTML file. We're going to add a couple JavaScript files. Um, we're also going to say on load equals init here. So this is the JavaScript function that's going to be called when our body loads, and that's where we will initialize uh, easel.js to start drawing to this canvas. So what we're going to do here is actually put create.js in. Now I'm going to put the entire library in, but you can get um, just the pieces of it. So in this video, we're going to be working with easel.js to draw things to the screen. In the next video, we'll look at working with tween.js to actually set the game in motion. Um, and then we're also going to work with preload.js in this video um, to load our assets. And eventually, we'll work with sound.js. So it's sort of a suite of libraries. But if you wanted to just use easel.js uh, for drawing and you didn't need the other functionality, you can get that separately. But the URL I'm sharing here is for uh, the entire suite of libraries being imported at once. So it's code.createjs.com 1.0.0 createjs.min.js. Uh, so that is going to be our script. For some reason, Adam loses its syntax highlighting, but that's okay. The other script we're going to do, so now that we've got that easel.js script in there, we're going to go ahead and um, add our script in there. So it's game.js. And that is going to be our script. That is going to be where that init function is loaded. I'll just reopen this so we can see the syntax highlighting. Uh, but the main thing is that you want to make sure that your script is loaded after the create.js script. Otherwise, um, you, since you're referencing create.js in your script, if it tries to load it before the create.js script, then uh, it might not work. So you want to make sure that yours is loaded after. So now we can go into this game.js and actually create that init function that's going to happen when the body is loaded and start um, loading um, uh, create.js and, and, and getting it ready and set up. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to place a background on our canvas. So I'm going to use a gradient background to kind of mimic this sort of horizon uh, that Flappy Bird is set in. So what we start off with, and I'm going to put a variable up here because we're going to want it to be global, is a stage. So the stage is basically what we're going to add all of our objects onto um, and what's kind of going to manage them for us. So we want to say stage equals new create js.stage.gl. 
Uh, and then this is where you pass in that ID that we gave before. So we had game canvas, so we're gonna call it game canvas. So if you'd called your something else, make sure you change that part as well. Now, I'm using stage GL at the moment. Um, you could also just simply say stage. What that is gonna do is not use WebGL. And if you use stage GL, then you'll be using WebGL. Of course, if you're a little bit more advanced with JavaScript, you could also probably write some code in here. Um, I don't believe CreateJS does it automatically to default back to stage in the event a browser doesn't support WebGL. WebGL, WebGL sorry, should get you a little bit better performance, but it does come at the cost of A, you have to cache everything, which is a good idea to do anyway, but it won't display um, some objects if you don't cache them, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then of course, uh, a little bit more far-fetched on the browser support. So um, choose what you like. I'm gonna use stage GL for the remainder of this video. Um, sometimes I do find it handy to switch back to stage when you're debugging so that you don't have to cache just to make, because that can cause things not to show up on the screen. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll get to that later. So to start with, I want to get our background in here. Our background is going to be very simple. Like I said, it's a gradient, so we don't actually have an image for it. Um, it's going to be a new create js dot shape, and then we're going to draw a gradient to this. So we can do background dot graphics dot begin linear gradient fill. It's going to be three colors. So I'm going to start off with like a dark blue, go to like a lighter blue, and then towards the end I'm going to go from that light blue to a green. Um, and that's kind of going to create like a ground grass area. And then we have, of course, the, um, the sort of dark blue to light blue of the horizon. So I just stole these photos uh, from a color picker of some horizon photo, uh, but they look pretty good. Does a pretty good job of sort of giving me the effect that I want with a simple creation that doesn't require me to have a separate image. So I'll go ahead and put them in here. You can just copy them or use any colors that you find suitable. Five, six, seven, a 32. So these are our colors. You can add as many as you want. You can see Adam's highlighting them there. So we have a darker blue going to a lighter blue going to a green color. So you could use as many or as few colors as you want. In your garden, you obviously need at least two. It's a gradient. But uh, And what a gradient means, if you're unfamiliar, is just we're fading between colors. And so now what I want to do is I want to specify the points on the gradient. So at what percentage, basically, of the gradient's length do I want these to um, do I want these to sort of start at? So I want my blue, my dark blue to start at zero. I want my other one to start at 85 percent of the gradient. Um, or sorry, I, so my blue starts at zero. Um, and then this 85% is actually going to be where we're transitioning to like this one. And then we're fully transitioned to it um, here. So we start the transition from this one to this one at zero. We start the transition from this one to this one at 85%. And then we're fully this one at one. So it's a little confusing. But basically what this does is it makes sure that instead of evenly going between the colors, we are blue most of the way. And then we bring in that green just at the end there. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to specify the X and Y of the start of sort of our gradient line and the X and Y of the end. So our screen is 480, so that's we're going to go the entire vertical of the screen. We're actually not going to move at all on the X because what happens is if we move these two points on the X so that they're separate uh, X directions, you're going to end up actually getting an angled gradient. So if that's what you want, that's how you can achieve that. But in this case, we want a gradient that's straight down. So we're going to go the full length, but x, y's, we're going to stay in the same position. So we get a straight down line. So we're going to stay at zero, but then we're going to go to 480. And of course, the gradient will fill this entire rectangle, you know, by duplicating itself along, but uh, it won't. Um, it won't be a diagonal. How we specify where it's actually going to draw the gradient, so of course this is really we're just specifying the angle here. How we're going to specify where we're going to draw the gradient, and I'm going to move on to the next line, is by using the draw rect function. 
And so what we're going to do there is we're going to start at 0, 0. That is the upper left-hand corner. So if you're not familiar with graphics programming, it's a good habit to get into. For most graphics programming, I find 0, 0 is the upper left-hand corner of the screen. It's a little bit wonky if you're not familiar with it, but you'll get used to it. Um, and then we want to go to 320 and 480, so our entire width of the screen. And that should get our gradient working. Now I want to set the X and Y to be uh, 0, upper left hand corner again. So basically what this means is there's, there's both global and local coordinates for these things. So we're doing this in local coordinates, but we could theoretically shift this now by setting the X and Y. So even though in the local coordinates it, it would be at 0, 0, we could actually shift the rectangle by shifting the X and Y, but we're not going to. Um, I'm going to give it a name of background. So just uh, that's useful for debugging and stuff uh, if we ever need to go into the inspector and check it out. And then the final step is I'm going to cache it. So what this basically does is as long as the contents of my background aren't changing, it's that same gradient every time the screen draws that I'm drawing. It's not going to change at all throughout the life of the game. I just cache it. So it doesn't really have to regenerate it again. So I'm going to cache it. And again, this is in the local coordinates for the object. So even if I'd had this at like say 10, 10, um, I would still want to cache this in the local coordinates. And then we want to do stage.addChild. And so when I was mentioning before, and then we add the background, when I was mentioning before that you have to cache everything that you're using with stage GL, if I simply put stage here and then remove this line 12 here, the background should still show up. Uh, the performance will be worse, but it will still show up. If I'm using stage GL, I have to cache. I don't have another option. So um, if you don't, if you're not seeing it showing up, make sure that you have this line. Uh, and if you're using stage GL and it's not showing up, just try switching it to stage and removing the cache line and seeing what happens. Sometimes it's possible you have the coordinates wrong, that sort of thing. So go ahead and see that. So now if I save, um, actually I do need to do one more thing here. I need to do a stage update. <laughs> Normally we have something from tween.js that will do this for us. But for the time being, I'm just going to trigger that once manually. And so now if I open the index.html, it should work. Now here's the thing. Uh, most browsers, Chrome, etc., won't actually allow you to have a WebGL file like use WebGL if you're loading it from a file. It's a security concern, I don't really know how it works, but one way to get around that is just by starting up a simple Python web server. So if you have Python installed, go to the directory. I have it here in my uh, Linux subsystem for Windows, but you could have it right in Windows too. Run the command python 3 m HTTP.server. And of course, if your Python 3 is referred to as Python, then do that. Uh, but just make sure you're not using Python 2. This is going to start up a web server for us, or it should. Okay, we'll try it. So we'll go to localhost. Perfect. So when we go to localhost colon eight thousand, we actually have our gradient here. It's rendered to the canvas, so we can see that it looks like a horizon. We've got darker sky fading into lighter blue, and then the green. Next thing I want to do is actually draw some images. So our game is more than just the background. I have three different images that I want to load and draw onto the canvas as part of our game. So if you would like to get the same images that I'm using, I will have them available as a free download on my website. There's three of them. It's a cloud that we're using for decoration, the flappy bird little thinger, um, the guy, I guess, uh, and the pipe uh, that's going to come along the screen. So I want to draw, I want to load all these images um, and I want to draw the clouds and then we'll end it off for this video. But I just want to show you guys how to draw images before we continue. So what we're going to do is first of all we need to load the images. So when we've loaded the page here we haven't actually loaded in the images. So this is where preload.js comes in. Um, and it allows you to basically load the images asynchronously in the background and then all at the same time and add them when it's ready. So what I'm going to do is after this, 
After this stage add child stage update here, that's when I want to load my images. So the user is going to load the page. We'll put this background on there. They can look at the background. You could also add like a loading text or something, but in my case, I'm only loading three images. So I'm just going to let them look at the background, but it won't freeze the browser or anything. It won't still be loading. Then we'll load the images in the background. And as soon as they're ready, we'll put them on the canvas. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a manifest, um, manifest, there we go, variable. And it should be var manifest equals, not var equals manifest. This is an array of the images and sounds, uh, which we might get to later, um, that we want to load. So we give the source. So the source is, uh, for the first one, it's cloud.png. And we'll set this up so it goes to the image folder in just a second. We're going to load that with an ID of cloud. And then we have three more, or two more, sorry. So I have all my images here. So I have a cloud, I have flappy.png, ID is going to be flappy. Uh, I have pipe.png, pipe. Okay. And so that's that. So those are all my images that I need to load. Now I need to initialize the loader. So I'm also going to put it up here because we're going to want it to be a global. Loader equals new create js dot load queue. Uh, we're going to pass true so it can use uh, some updated loading technology. Uh, I think it's called uh, XRS, XHS or something like that. Um, you can use that preferably if, if available. We'll do a loader.add event listener for when it's finished. You can also add a progress update. So if you have a lot of things that you're loading, you want to put some text up here, and then you want to update the text as things load, you totally can do that with this. In my case, I don't have a lot of things that I'm loading, so I'm just going to get the notification when it's complete and let the user stare at the background in the meantime. But if you're doing a large game, definitely would recommend maybe adding something a little bit more fancy in terms of a loading signal in there. I'm going to create a function called handle complete. It's going to be called there. And I will do loader.load manifest manifest true and dot image. And so the true here just means that we want it to load right now, which is pretty obvious and it is the default, but we need to pass it if we're going to pass this later argument here, which is um, the folder that we want to load from. So we're going to use the image folder. And so that's pretty much that. So what we need to do now is actually respond once these are loaded and add in our clouds. So I'm going to create a function here called handle complete. And what handle complete is going to do is it's going to call a function called create clouds. And what create clouds is going to do is, well, we're going to go ahead and create some of those clouds that we're going to use for decoration. So what I'm going to start here with here in function create clouds is I'm going to start with var clouds equals an empty array. Okay. Um, we're going to make the there be three clouds in the sky, so it's the same image. So we're going to do for var i equals zero, i less than three, i plus plus. We want to make three of these little clouds. So we want to do clouds.push. That's going to add one of these to the array. We're going to do a new create js.bitmap. So notice different than the shape we did before. This is a bitmap. And we're going to do a loader.get result um, cloud. And so remember when we specified the IDs there, now we can do loader.getResultCloud and it's going to give us this cloud.png. Perfect, so that's the bitmap. Uh, bitmaps work a lot like shapes. They're a type of what they basically extend from a class called display object. Um, so they have a lot of the same sort of properties and, and methods uh, like we used here. The nice thing with bitmaps is you don't have to cache them in order to display them. Um, and in fact, the create.js documentation states that it's actually worse off performance wise to try caching a bitmap. So it will let you do it. There are some instances where you need to do it, but if you're using any of those advanced instances, you know, obviously do it. But 
in general, you don't have to have that cache function there to display a bitmap, it, whether you're using WebGL or just the regular canvas. It doesn't matter. So what we can do now, we've kind of created those clouds. Now I'm going to exit my for loop. I'm going to give them all coordinates individually. So cloud 0.x equals 40, clouds 0.y, I'm going to have that be 20. I mean, you can pick whatever coordinates you want here. Um, these are some that I picked out earlier that I think create quite an attractive background, especially once we get things in motion here, which I will show you in the next video. But um, to start with, we've got this. So going to throw those on there. Now I'm going to use another for loop to actually add them all to the stage. So we can do for var i equals zero, i less than three, i plus plus, and we will um, go ahead and add them all to the stage. So I'll do stage add child clouds i. Now one important thing to note here, um, it's fairly intuitive, it might be obvious, but I want to note it. Things on the stage will display in the order you add them unless you specify otherwise. So when you add something to the stage, it automatically goes to the top. Generally, this is what you want. This is why we add our background first. Uh, if we added the clouds and then the background, obviously because the background takes up the whole screen, the background would just display over the clouds. Because we're adding the clouds after, then the clouds will display over the background. There is a way to override this functionality by using the add child index method, and we will get to it later. But I just want to note, in case you're wondering, that that's why the clouds actually do display above the background. So that's how you 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 know determine where um, they will display. So now, um, once that's done, I'm going to do another manual stage to update here, and again, we'll remove these calls in the next video. But we should now see our clouds um, on the screen. If we refresh, we do not see them on the screen. What? Ah, the bane of my existence. A spelling error has caused our clouds not to appear on the screen. Right here, Cools clouds. Let's fix that up. Apologize for the error, but at least you guys will know. What could be causing such a thing? It's not always a big mistake. Uh, perfect. So now we see our clouds on the screen. They're there. They're static, but they're there. Um, so we have quite a beautiful little background ready to go. In the next video, what I'm going to show you to do is we're going to start setting things in motion. We're going to start using tween.js to make these clouds move. We're going to get our bird moving as well. And so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. And join me in the next one as we continue to really spice up this Flappy Bird game and take it from a static background to a game in motion. I'll see you in the next video, guys. If you liked it, like, comment, subscribe. Remember, I will have the download for these images that I'm using as well as a full written tutorial down in the description. So be sure to check that out on my site. Do as much as I can to help you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I can't promise I can fix everything, but I can do what I can. Uh, I will take a look at your comment and see if I can figure out why yours isn't working, but please do leave as much detail as possible. With that being said, I will check see you in the next video where we set things in motion. Goodbye.